It's funny how we never get questions, my SQL performance has gone suddenly fast. It's, an, it's never a question that comes in. It's always these ones. My SQL performance has suddenly dropped. We have come across this issue of sudden SQL performance degradation due to a change in a plan, but there are no changes to the code or to the stats. How is this possible? And I'll do a demo which helps you demonstrates this, but here's the, probably the, the most common thing that people sometimes struggle with. If you change nothing, the plans can still change. And this is most of the time a good thing. And we'll explain with the demo, but it's one of those things where I've encountered DBAs in the past, and I've been guilty of this myself in the past, where I thought, I've got a system which is running nicely, I'll lock the stats. Or I know the system is relatively static anyway, then amount of changes going on is never going to get me over the threshold where stats will be regathered. Therefore, I'm happy with the way the system is running, the stats aren't changing, and yet somehow the plans all of a sudden change. It's like Oracle is out to get me, or the optimizer is out to get me. What's going on? So let's look at a demo now which talks about this. I'm going to create a table here called orders. And the way I'm creating it here, I've got 100,000 rows scattered over 20 random days starting on the 29th of January, because this will bring us up to today. So if I run that, you'll see that what I've got is starting from 29th of January up until today, around about 5,000 orders per day. I'm a happily successful business and obviously very consistent. I get a roughly 5,000 orders every day, every single day. We could assume this table goes back ad infinitum. I just didn't want to bore you with a 1 billion row population. But let's assume the table finishes today because today is the current day. We don't have orders in the future, but the data goes back as far as you'd like to go. Let's gather stats on that table. So there's not, not an issue here of missing stats. And let's do some queries. Now, the kind of queries I'm that my application or ad hoc users are going to do is showing my recent orders. So it's going to be something like select star from orders where the date is greater than sys date. Now, sys date for me is just, it's almost uh, 9 p.m. So the day is almost finished. So we haven't come up with exactly 5,000 rows. The database had shrunk it down a little bit less. That It's about 5,000 rows. And we can assume that every day people are going to run these kinds of queries. Show me queries for the current day. So for the rest of this demo, I'm going to hard code dates, but I'm simulating that as days go on, I'm simply using sysdate, but obviously I can't walk forward into the future. So here's my queries now. It's the 17th of February, so I'm looking for all the rows past the 17th of February, and the database says, I reckon there'll be about 5,000. And as we saw from the real data, that's spot on. There's about 5,000 orders per day. We can assume that the optimizer will come up with a good plan when the estimate meets the reality. Now I've got this one. Tomorrow comes along, I need to insert another 5,000 rows. I'm going to get 5,000 rows tomorrow. So here's the 18th of Feb, plus around about, what, 4,964 rows. So tomorrow, people are going to run a queries like this. For the 18th of February, show me the data. I inserted 4,900 rows, and the optimizer is doing a pretty good job still. It says I'm going to get about 4,700 rows. Order of magnitude, not much difference, about the same. So I'm expecting good plans again. Tomorrow comes along, so now it's tomorrow, tomorrow. That's the 19th of Feb, another 5,000 rows. Queries for the day after tomorrow. Now it's dropped to about 4,400. It's still pretty close, 4,900, 4,400. I'm probably going to be okay. What happens after a week? So now I'm starting from the 21st of Feb, another 35,000 rows at 5,000 orders per day. So that's effectively a week's worth of data. So in a week's time, when I ask for the 28th of February, now I'm only half, so I'm only now half as good as an estimate. Now I'm starting to run perhaps into trouble because when you start getting these, you know, this is like twice as bad or the estimate is twice as wrong or half as wrong, depending on which way you want to view it, I'm more likely to get things like instead of I wanted a hash join, I might get a nested loop, etc. And let's now continue on even further from 1st of March onward for another 100,000 rows and now once again, I'm looking for 20th of March. This will be 5,000 orders on this day, and the database thinks I'll get one. The issue here is what we call boundary conditions. But this demonstrates the fact that all I've done is I've done no changes to the stats. Everything's the same. And yet all of a sudden, my plans are most likely to start going downhill because we know 
There's 5,000 rows to be obtained here. The database thinks there'll only be one. Pretty much that's a 5,000 fold order of magnitude problem. And therefore you're gonna have all sorts of dramas there when it comes to coming up with execution plans. Here's where we are having dramas. If I go look at the stats, which I gathered at the start, we have these things called the low and high value, which are collected inside the database. The gathering stats collects this information and you get this wonderfully cryptic information that comes out here. There's your low and high values. What does that mean to us? Not a great deal. However, in DBMS stats, we have conversion utilities to actually show us that data. So you can simply do convert raw value and it shows you that the data is as we first gathered stats, 29th of January to the 17th of Feb. At which point you're probably going, well, hold on a second. If I've inserted all these extra thousands of rows over time, then I would regather stats. This is true in this trivial example. But as I said at the start, in a real example, your orders would go back maybe five, six, 10 years. Adding another week, even another month of data is not going to be a dramatic change to the stats in that table. In fact, the database is not going to regather stats until you change at least 10% of the data by default. So these are much more common occurrences because you're adding in 5,000 rows every single day, but you've got 10 million already. The volume of changes is tiny compared to the total volume of the table, so we're never going to change the stats. Therefore, these boundary conditions, when you start hitting beyond the boundaries, we start getting these issues. So graphically, this is what the optimizer does. Because it stores the low and high bound for each column value that it's gathered stats on, it says by default that the distribution inside here is the same throughout. Histograms might change this, but by default, simply with low and high values, we have a common density between these two ranges. However, when you provide a predicate which is outside, either above the upper bound or below the lower bound, we use a scaling off algorithm to say it's unlikely based on my stats that there will be data out here. If I think the highest value is 17th of February, then querying for the 20th of February means I'm unlikely to find data, and so it scales that off. Back in the day, way back in Oracle 7, if you went above the, out, the boundary condition, we simply assume zero, and that caused no doubt heaps of problems. But now we have this thing where we scale it off. You saw we went from 5,000 rows to 4,400 to 4,000, then to 2,000, and eventually all the way down to one as we went further and further away into the future from these high values that the optimizer knew about. So how do we solve this? One of the cool things, depending on what system you're running, if you're running, say, autonomous or an engineered system, we have a thing called real-time statistics in Oracle 19C. And what real-time stats does is as you're doing DML, the database will actually track the DMLs you're running and from time to time decide, oh, I can perhaps update the low and high values for various columns. It's not like a full gathering of stats. It's simply monitoring DML as we go. And what we call real-time stats is as you do DML, as you keep inserting new rows all tagged with sysdate, it knows that I can push that high value further off into the future. Real-time stats is perhaps the thing that solves all these kind of queries where you're doing select for column greater than sysdate, where column greater than existing high value sequence number, etc. Real-time stats almost instantly solves this but it's only available on certain systems. The other one is what we call the more frequent gathering of stats. Once again, on 19C on certain systems, we look for stats that might be candidates every 15 minutes. Now, the, still, the stats still have to be stale. We have to cross that 10% boundary, but if we do, then we're much more likely to fix that problem uh, quickly as opposed to waiting for the next evening's statistics run. Some of the options you can do on your own systems is if you know that systems, you have systems that are sort of a consistently moving forward with data and you know that you've got issues with boundary conditions, you might, for example, change the percentage thresholds. By default, a table needs to change by 10% of activity before we regather stats. You could change that to say 5%, 1%, et cetera, using the set table preferences command. If you've listened to Nigel and my's podcast, he recommends always just doing making your modifications with preferences. Therefore, the standard nightly jobs will obey those preferences and pick up those table by table or schema by schema preferences you've set. Or if you know that you're doing effectively 5,000 rows, say, every day, you might, for example, at the end of a day, do a manual gathering of stats outside the normal stats window because you know that ad hoc queries are about to come in. It might be, I do a manual gather at lunchtime and maybe a manual gather at eight in the morning, such that I know the stats are freshly up to date for the ad hoc queries. 
you can adjust the stats gathering process to the business processes that best align for the performance needs. The other option you can do is if you have a set of plans that you're very happy with, we need to get out of that mindset of, oh, because the plans are good, I won't touch the stats and therefore everything will stay locked down. We've just seen that that's not the case. It's important that the only really way to say, here's a plan that I like, the best way to do it is with SQL plan management. That way you'll always get a consistent plan. Now I stress, consistent plans does not necessarily mean consistent performance. But what you are doing is you're choosing a trade-off here. You're saying, I'm going to compromise performance potentially by making sure I don't get any performance nightmares, some sudden spikes. I'm lo looking at choosing to lock my plans down such that performance may degrade slowly over time, but it's going to stay consistent. An example of that would be this high boundary. Let's say I've used SPM to say I'm always going to use an index because I'm always getting just the last day's worth of data. Well, as we add more and more data in there, querying from a particular point in time, at some point that should flip over to table access full because you're scanning more and more data. But if you've, you've, yes, if you've used SPM, then you're always going to be using that index read, but it will slowly degrade in performance until such point you can actually decide, yep, okay, it's time to change the way I'm doing my plan. As opposed to one day at random, it goes from index to full scan and you weren't expecting it. So SPM is all about controlling evolution of performance uh, and therefore you might actually sacrifice the perfect performance, but you're getting consistency. If you really get stuck, what you can do is you can use set table stats, for example, to adjust those high values. If you don't have real time stats, you know, obviously setting table stats can be risky because you have to make sure everything aligns in terms of the index stat, the column level stats, the table stats, etc. But generally, it's not too high risk just to tweak, for example, the high value. If you have a table with has dates in it or you have things like sequence numbers in it, sometimes just tweaking that high value using set table stats or set column stats is enough to keep those plans under control and under management.